Hello, my name is Elliot. I'm an osteopath at the Revitalized Clinic. This is my colleague Charlotte, who's also an osteopath at the Revitalized Clinic. Charlotte's about to go on a busman's holiday, because she's about to receive treatment for an injury that she's left for 10 months, despite actually working in a clinic where she has access to treatment 24-7. All right, cool. So Charlotte uh, has been experiencing pain around the front of her shoulder for about 10 months. So the first thing that we do is we look into what might be anatomically going on. All right, so after a quick assessment, we found that the coracoid process, which is where also the biceps and the pecs attach to, is quite tender. And whenever Charlotte activates the muscles around the coracoid process, that's replicating her pain. But Charlotte also, through her own experimentation, has found that closed chain movements or closed kinetic chain movements, i.e. when the hands are fixed, like a plank or a push-up, that actually gives her relief. So we're now going to go through movements that build the capacity of the shoulder, but simultaneously build the capacity within a situation which is already reducing pain. So it means that we just get two for one. Charlotte already knows what reduces her pain. We scale up movement within that to further reduce pain. Then Charlotte can exercise, treat patients without feeling like she's uncomfortable after, after work. All right, so we're gonna go through what we've been working on. So first movement, kind of a close kinetic chain, but what it does do is it really contracts the muscles that attach to the coracoid process, such as the pectoral muscles, and subscapularis, which is in the, the front of the shoulder. <clears throat> so I'll show you how we're going to do that. So this exercise you've probably seen before, it's a plate press. So what Charlotte's going to do is first off reduce compensation. So we notice that Charlotte likes to flare her elbows to reduce her own pain, so, which is fine, but it's not what we want to focus on for this movement. So here we want Charlotte to be nice and upright, shoulder, shoulder blades depressed. And here to stop these plates from shifting apart, Charlotte's having to compress them quite hard. As the leverage increases, or as the fulcrum increases, so the weight goes further away from Charlotte's body, she's gonna to have to work harder. So what Charlotte's gonna do is just press out. As soon as you feel like you're about to reach that point of no return, you're gonna come back in again. Nice and slow. So with pain, we don't need to push it. We just take the body up to what we want it to adapt to, and the body is just an absolute masterclass at overcompensating. So Charlotte can go, say, out by about 60%, and then back in. Next week or the week after, she's likely to be able to progress to 70 to 80%, right? That's the equal axis now, if you like. So the next movement we're going to go through is a movement to start to open up all of those muscles that attach to the coracoid process. So Charlotte, if you'd like to lay on your back for me, please. So we've already worked the muscles that attach to the front of the shoulder blade. So now we need to work the muscles that attach to the coracoid process, which is basic, basically an extension of the shoulder blade. Now the muscles go from the coracoid process down into the rib, rib cage wall and also down into the mid-arm. So all Charlotte's gonna do is hold her hand, hold this weight together. We're gonna to lengthen the, the length of the fulcrum. So you're gonna stretch it out for me. And we want Charlotte to bring her rib cage down to give more of a stretch to the muscles. So as Charlotte then takes her hands back, she's then going to breathe out. That depresses the rib cage, but we're stretching it using the leverage from the, or the fulcrum uh, of, the, of the humerus, so the arm get to a comfortable position or a position where she feels that bind, and then she's gonna come back up again. Just do a couple more for me, please. So breathing out, lengthening throughout the muscles that attach to the coracoid process, and, uh, and into the arm, and into the rib cage, and then back up. So all of these movements Charlotte will do for say, two to three sets of 10. The last movement that we worked on, which brings, back, brings us back to the closed kinetic chain, is, the, uh, is a scaled push-up, super easy to do. So Charlotte's going to lay on her front. Now the reason why we scale it is so patients can introduce the press-up or the load of the push-up at a rate which is comfortable for them and a rate which they can manage it. So Charlotte is going to go exactly the same movement cue for the plate press. So shoulder blades are gonna be pinched together Hands, I need you to have your hands just underneath your armpits. So you're gonna go yeah, exactly that. Charlotte is then gonna dig her toes into the floor, um, straighten the knees. And now Charlotte's gonna push her chest up. And when she feels like she can bring her hips up after, she will. So you're gonna push your chest up. And then when you feel like you can manage it, perfect, the hips come up. All Charlotte would do is gradually, bit by bit, bring her hips up sooner and sooner and sooner to load the shoulder more and more. Nice and slow, nice control, building that mind-body connection. Now, the nice thing, what's going with exercise, is that although a lot of patients, when they're in pain, they avoid exercise, Charlotte and most of our patients will notice that they feel considerably better after they exercise. It doesn't make sense because you're pushing something which hurts. But by you pushing that area, having a conversation with it, you are showing the area what it can do. 
by showing the area what it can do, the brain then adjusts and realizes it can do a little bit more, gives more freedom to the area to move, and you go through this conversation of, I think you can do more, I can do more, let's do more, and that's how we just scale you out of pain. So I hope that was useful for anyone suffering from shoulder pain or wondering how osteopaths might treat shoulder pain. Um, I'd recommend that you book into the clinic via the website if you have any questions, and uh, also if you would like treatment for anything sore. Thanks for watching.